get to planting my roots, my carrots, um, beets, turnips, get my onions in. And uh, it's a nice day, but the mosquitoes are quite bad. And last night, um, it was it still stayed about like 17, I think, degrees Celsius last night. So it was our first night keeping the chicks outside. So we're just uh, checking on them and seeing how they're doing. Make sure they got water and food and everything's going well. So also, I want to give you a little update on the asparagus. Since Hannah has weeded them, I'm going to show you actually how big they have gotten. Actually, we're probably going to have some tonight for supper because they're ready. Once they start growing, you want to pick them. And the more you pick them, the more they grow. If you pick them um, regularly, you can get almost about like 12 weeks worth of asparagus. So it's really important to keep picking them and not letting them, you know, get to, too big and to flower. So anyways, I'm just going to show you. It's very exciting. All right, here they are. Look at this. Isn't that phenomenal? This, so it is Thursday today and she just weeded them, um, finished weeding them on Sunday. And I don't know if you can see the tallest ones up here and they go all the way down. So we need to pick these. So this, you don't want them to get like this. You want them to be maybe about like this. This is the perfect size, really. But um, we got to pick them because as you can see, uh, lots more are coming up as soon as we, basically I just cut them here. Uh, take a knife and just cut them. I'll show you later. The more you do it, the more you're going to get. So there is tons of them. And this is only one row and I have four rows. So yeah, that one's gone a bit too far. You don't want it to get like that. So these are the Jersey Giants. As you can tell, they're huge. Um, as you can see, the size of my thumb. They're huge. Anyways. Oh, there's my scissors. I've been looking all over for my scissors. Anyways, we're going to get started. We're going to get planting. Ah! All right, let's go check on the chicks. And then we'll get on to uh, planting those, uh, those root crops. I think Hannah's going to try and tackle the grass. I can't believe how fast it has grown. I don't know if you've seen these flowers yet. So this is one of our apple trees. Anyways, this one's been well established here. And you can almost, I don't know if you can hear all the bees. There's not much leaves on them, but they have flowered right out. As you can see, the chicks survived the night. They did well. I mean, they're not really babies anymore. They're not really teenagers. They're huge. These are doing well. It's supposed to get a little cooler down to eight this weekend, but we'll see how they do. I think they might be okay. They're doing well. So my tomatoes are doing really well, as you can see. Um, I'm going to try to take them outside today and get them used to the sun. So I think it's just about time to do some transplanting and at least put these into um, some of them into the greenhouse. It's too early yet. Um, it's about the 20th of May. It's too early to put them in the ground outside yet, but I think they'd be fine in the greenhouse um, unheated. So they have protection some, from some frost. So I think I'm just going to kind of get them used to the sun. There's a few that didn't make it and that's okay. Also, um, the peppers... They should be just a bit ready to go out. They're getting a bit tired of being in these pots. So we're going to get these things out and hopefully we can get the broccoli in the ground soon too. And I don't know if you can see, hard to see with the light, but these are my herbs. And uh, anyways, they're about ready to be transplanted. So we're going to get those done too. There's lots and lots to do. And I don't know if you see my cucumbers they are doing really well. So we're going to transplant those next week, hopefully as well. So Hannah found her first toad of the year here, Plowman's Backyard. She is an avid frog collector. 
Anyways, he's cute. He's little. Pretty cute, eh? Mm -hmm. I, you can see the little spots here. It's so pretty. Aww. Very nice. All right, so I'm just um, starting to get to do planting. So I'm gonna start off with my turnip, I think, first, because I know where that's going and planting it in the same spot I planted it last year, as well as my beets. So what I'm planting this year for tur or rutabaga, I should say, is the, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's the Champion um, Purple Top Rutabaga from Baker Creek Seeds, as well as, um, Laurentian, and they're both really good uh, rutabaga seeds. This one is from William Dam Seeds. So those are my two favorite rutabaga um, to plant in the garden. They do really well. Uh, for my carrots this year, I've got um, Imperator carrots from MI Gardener. Then I had these leftover seeds uh, my husband got me a while back, um, the Scarlet Nance, which I do grow quite often. And, and one of my favorite is the yaw yaw carrots, but I couldn't get them this year. Um, they were all sold out. So for my beets, I've got the, just going to use up old seeds. These are cylindrica. They're not my favorite, um, but I got the seeds. I'm not going to let them go to waste. I really enjoy the dark red Detroit um, beets. They're really good too. Um, they grow quite big. And then my next favorite one is the Bull's Blood, and these are from MI Gardeners. And they are really good beets, but as well as the tops are really tasty. So you can put them in salads or you can kind of cut them up um, the same as you would chard or spinach, kind of fry them up a little bit. They're wonderful. So those are what I'm going to plant today. And then I just picked up these onion seeds. I didn't buy sets this year, um, just from No Frills. And so I'm going to plant these in the garden today too. And uh, we'll see if we can get that all done. And if I have time, I am going to try and get my broccoli out in the garden as well, because it's in the house. And um, the longer they stay in the house, the more chance they have to die and go bad. So you can see the soil on top. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's quite dry. But um, once you kind of work up, it's there. It's quite wet. It's not too wet to plant in, but it's damp. So that's perfect. This is what the uh, turnip seeds look like. Okay, I usually put two in and then surprisingly, um, turn up transplants really well so if they both come up I plant two just in case one doesn't come up and when they both come up um, I let them get about so big and then I actually take them out of the ground and I'll transplant them somewhere else in the garden and they actually do really well they transplant well and they grow well they get quite big still it's supposed to rain tonight and tomorrow, so it's a perfect time to get those seeds in the ground. I always try to plan my planting around the rain. And as you can see, I've cut holes in my um, black plastic, my ground cover. And the reason why I do that um, is so that I have a spot and I know, I know every year where I planted something last year and I kind of plan in accordance. So most things you plant need space. So, I mean, I could go ahead and plant my, my beets here. I could plant my beans here. So just try and space it out. If you have black plastic or tarp or ground cover, space it out so that you can plant multiple things in the same area. Um, it's a good thing to change up where you plant things every couple years or every few years another rock just to prevent um, bugs and disease and things like that so
Now when you grow turnip, you don't want to, uh, they'll get quite big. You can actually eat the tops of them too, but um, I haven't, usually the chickens devour the tops and they love them, so I give them to the chickens. But um, the rutabaga itself, you don't want to pick them, even though they look like they're ready to be picked and large, until they've had a good frost. The frost actually sweetens them up but also after the frost, you don't want to wait too long to pick them because then they can get really woody if you let them get too big. We're starting our um, beet row now. So usually I do my carrot row right behind me here. I usually do my turnip, my beets, and my carrots right in a row, but uh, this year because we're putting up a fence to keep the, most of the chickens out, because they do eat a lot of the tops of the greens, they love greens. I'm just going to fence off about half of my garden space, and the other half I'm going to leave unfenced. So what we're going to do this year is put the stuff that the chickens eat inside the fence, to keep them out as a deterrent and um, the stuff that they don't touch um, I'm gonna put them outside of the fence so the carrots they don't touch the carrots so I'm gonna put them somewhere out somewhere new this year and I'm doing the same thing I'm uh, putting the hole in Hannah's coming behind me putting two seeds in each hole in case one doesn't come up um, the beets, I have transplanted them. I don't find they work as well as the turnips. here but this is our apple tree I was telling you we planted about five years ago that we haven't had any fruit on and as you can see there is a lot of flowers now we've had flowers before um, and no fruit I'm praying this year maybe we can have fruit the problem is we have had every year we get like tent caterpillars or gypsy moth caterpillars, and they'll just devour everything. So the bees have been around. I was watching the bees earlier. Um, so there's, they're definitely pollinating it. But um, just looking, you can kind of see, when you see cobwebbing, um, you know that there's caterpillars around. So you can spray your trees. We haven't had much success in getting rid of these moths or caterpillar moths. I don't really see any on here yet, but if I'm possibly, if I'm diligent in spraying, um, perhaps I can try and see if we can get some actual fruit off this tree this year. But I mean, I am happy. Oh, there's a, there's a caterpillar. I don't know if you can see it or not. So that is um, one of those gypsy moth caterpillars. And we take them and we squish them. And he's gone. But if there's one, there's a lot more. Oh yeah, look at that. You got to look really closely. They're so hard to see. I mean, you'd have to come out here a couple times a day and just to try to kill them. Usually, oh, there's another one. Usually, um, killed that one. They're usually underneath. 
and um, you'll find cobwebbing and you will find like holes holes in your leaves from chewing they're just signs that you've got some pests on your fruit trees and see and I don't get these pests with raspberries and things so there's another one there and he's gonna be squashed anyways well the bugs are at it again they must have just went for a nap or something anyways I'm gonna get Hannah just to, um, to plant my onion seeds on my onions anyways and this is a new spot so I need to cut some more holes last year I did my cabbage over here and the between the chickens and the slugs um, I only got a few cabbages so I'm gonna put the cabbages in the fenced area and I'm gonna move my onions out here because the chickens do not bother the onions and that's all I do to cut that and I'm just going all along the line and I'm putting an extra holes in because I need I don't need to have this much space between onions so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that all right Hannah has just started planting some of the onions I'm going to wet it so that when the rain comes, it's not going to wash away the carrot seeds because the carrot seeds are, they're so tiny and they're fine that if when it rains and the soil's dry, it's just going to wash them away. And that's why people don't get good germination sometimes. But if you wet them in, the seed will stick to the soil and when the rain comes, it won't wash them away. Scarlet Nance carrots, and I'm gonna uh, know if you can see in there or not. They are so tiny, kind of like lettuce seeds. They're there. So I'm just going to show you the camera cut out for some reason. I think it gets a little bit too hot and shuts off. But anyways, what I just did is I went through and where I planted all my carrot seeds, I just went because it, it's damp, the soil, and I just, wherever the seeds are, I just touched it and pressed them down. Um, you probably can't see it on the camera, but they're not coming off on my finger. But what they're doing is in case the rain comes, um, or wind because you really don't want to really truly bury your carrot seeds you really want them just on the surface with maybe a sprinkle of soil on the top you can't really see them there's some there but that's just if it if it rains it's not gonna wash it away and if the wind comes it's not gonna blow them away so that's why I'm doing that and that's kind of the reason why I chose to um, damp it first was just to prevent any runoff really and just to secure the seeds there. So I went through and that's all I did is I just, you know, kind of press them into the soil. And then what I'm going to do is just sprinkle a very light dusting over top, barely even covering them at all. And then we're just going to let them germinate and it should work. Okay, so before I head in, we've got all of our root crops um, planted. Before I head in, I'm going to plant my Watham 29 broccoli. They're doing quite well. I'm just going to get these in the ground. I've got about six or so of them, plus I've got more growing. They're a bit smaller, but 
Um, the more I can get it at the house right now, the better. And these are a colder season crop. So if we do have frost, which I'm sure we will before it's time to plant the tomatoes, um, these will survive and do well. I've also brought out my red Russian kale and a few of my, I think the red express, red express cabbage and they're all cold season. So if we get a frost, it's not going to hurt these. The reason why I've been waiting for these is because the chickens, they really like the broccoli leaves as well as, um, as well as the cabbage. So we're going to keep the chickens kind of locked up in their run right now for a while until my husband gets, um, the fencing put around and finished. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to plant these. Can't wait to get some of these plants out of my house. It's going to be wonderful. All right. So we're just going to start out planting my broccoli. Usually I take some out. There's a rock in there. Just good to fluff it all up. And we're just going to take this broccoli out. Look how beautiful that broccoli is. Isn't that wonderful? Okay, we're just going to put it right in the hole there. So you want the, about the stem to be about level with the soil. So I'm just going to bring some of the soil back in here. sure that it's got enough in there around it. Perfect. What? I just found a toad in the dirt. You found a toad in the dirt. Let's see. Oh, Mr. Toady. <laughs> he was in the, he was uh, hiding under the uh, ground claw. We found, what, three toads today? Yeah. Pretty cool. First ones today. Mm-hmm. So now we're moving on to our red Russian kale. We're going to get these in the ground. I've only got about five or six of them left because I did plant some of these over in my lettuce bed. But I'm going to plant the rest in here again where the fenced area because the chickens will eat these. And then the last thing, I've got a few uh, cabbages. And then probably in about another week or two, I'll have more cabbages and broccoli as well as cauliflower I can probably put out. This area here is usually where I plant my zucchini. It grows really well here. Um, but the chickens don't bother the zucchini. So here you go, honey. You can start over there if you want. So I decided I'm going to put the zucchini outside of the fenced area, which makes sense. And there's the roots of the kale. See, when they get looking like that, they really need to be transplanted. So it is a good thing that I'm bringing them out. Fresh soil and more space to grow, better sunlight. Makes for healthier plants. Anyways, uh, Hannah just asked me a really good question. She's down there planting my cabbage. Um, she's like, how do I get it out? So never ever pull your plant by the plant itself to pull it out of the, out of the pot. You may already know this, but um, for those that don't, always tip it over 
give it a couple squeezes, tap a couple squeezes and it shake it out and it should just literally fall right out because then you're not damaging the plant in the roots. So just a tip. So I'm just gonna show you how big my cabbage is. It's doing phenomenal in this little pot, but um, it is ready to be repotted. So it's a great idea to bring it outside. And this is my April green cabbage. Um, Hannah just planted the Red Express cabbage as well. I have um, coming up soon, I'll show you, but I have some Copenhagen cabbage as well, which all three are really good cabbages to grow. So um, again, um, when you're taking your plants out, never pull them by the plant. You always want to tip it over, a couple bangs, little squeezes, and it should just fall right out. Again, you can, you can tell that a plant needs to be transplanted by the discoloration. Um, they're unhappy as well as they can get root bound. Um, when there gets to be too many roots, it needs more space to grow. So if you're transplanting, um, it's preventing um, disease. So anyways, So we're at our asparagus patch and it is time to start harvesting because they have gotten way too big. I usually don't let them get this big. Um, all I'm doing is just taking a knife and I'm just cutting them. And the more often you cut, the more often you harvest, the more asparagus you'll get. It's better to choose to have them grow thin than thick, but these are the Jersey Giants and I believe these ones are the Millenniums. Um, you want to pick them before they get like the flowering end on it. You want them to be a little bit more like this one. So if you harvest them enough and not let them get like this or too woody, um, you can get up to 12 weeks worth of asparagus. So what happened was Hannah um, finished um, weeding the other day and in four or five days, they just spread right up with the heat. So you gotta watch them every day, clip, um, come out and harvest them every day and they'll keep in your, free in your fridge for a while. So um, we come out every day and even if you're just harvesting a handful, it's worth it. It keeps them growing and it keeps you having food to eat. No, honey, in the, in the white spot there. Ooh, that's not a cute little one, that's a beauty one. Okay, let's get the camera. Little and big. So I think maybe that might be a mama. She's gonna go hide. It's okay. It's okay. Let her go. And uh, where's the little one, Hannah? Right here. And there's a little baby. Oh, it's so cute. I'm okay with picking the little ones up, but not the huge ones. Just like the one right there. there. You should maybe send it with its mama, or maybe put it back here, honey. There might be a little nest somewhere. Okay. All right. So we just. Whew, bugs, man. I can't wait to go inside. So these. I just harvested um, asparagus as you can see we've got plenty here and this is just what grew in about five days and you've seen the difference um, little stubbies to once they once they get that heat man they go so like I said if you got asparagus I, I recommend planting this as soon as you get a property you know you get an abundance and there's days where I get I mean these are a little bit too big I waited too long but I didn't think they'd go that fast Anyways, I cut them anyways because I want those plants to give me more. If you just leave them there and go to seed, it stunts the um, roots and they don't produce as much. So we, every day you can go out and get enough for a meal. So um, there's lots out there. This is what I've got so far. There's still some coming up, but they're not too big, so I'm not too worried. So anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this video of our planting day and uh, we're calling it a day. So um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit that notification bell, please do, because that's an important one. 
And um, until we see you again, we thank you for joining us here at Plowman's Backyard. <laughs>